All right, in the last video, we were talking about refraction and indices of refraction, determine how much is bent. And it turns out that for many materials, the index of refraction depends on the wavelength. And therefore, if I put white light into um, a surface that has, say, crown glass, whose index of refraction is a function of wavelength, then different colors have different ends, which means they'll be bent different, and we'll get uh, a spreading out of the colors, the, the, the rainbow, so to speak. And that's called dispersion. And with a prism, you actually do it twice and magnify that, and you get the light uh, dispersed out. Uh, I have a video, I mean, a, a demo of that, but we won't get to do that this time. But you, 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 and you can probably Google and find a nice video that, that shows that. It, it's, that's one of the things Newton is sort of famous for, is for, for figuring that out by passing light through. Uh, glass, he was able to disperse it. But what he did further is he was able to take a lens then and bring the light, light back together and make it white again. So he concluded that white light was actually, in, in a way, a psychological phenomena that our eyes interpret when it has all the various colors. Now, there's a whole science behind colors and which colors we see, which are primary and which aren't. We don't really have time to go into that. Um, Dispersion explains, for example, the rainbow. The rainbow happens because we have white light coming into raindrops, and it's reflected, again, some of it's reflected, some of it's refracted at both these surfaces. At the back, it's reflected, and then it's refracted again, and the, the water has a, its index of refraction depends on color, so it spreads out the light. You have to be at a particular angle to be able to see these, Turns out the most intense is uh, at around 40 degrees. Everybody's seen, seen some rainbows. Um, there's also a secondary rainbow that you get from secondary refraction. This is going to be reflected in, internally again, and so it will repeat that process. And notice how it reversed them from the order of the color going in, where it reverses it again on the next reflection. And so you a really bright when you can see the two rainbows. Uh, another effect uh, of having both reflection and refraction at a surface is called to to total internal reflection. And there's a nice picture of it. There's a picture taken under water, and you can see there's the turtle. But if you look at the surface of the water, you see the reflection of the turtle. That's called, takes place because of total internal reflection. And again, we've got a nice app uh, that'll demonstrate that. Let me go over here into Canvas where it's at. So what this one lets me do is to take, I want to take my laser underwater and shine it out. And so if I'm, you know, in the pool shining the laser up and shining it on the roof, then that beam will come out and be reflected away from the normal because I'm going from slow to fast. And as I increase that angle, that initial angle, theta 1, then the refracted angle of course, it's bigger than the incoming, and it moves over until at some point it's actually 90 degrees. There, then it gets real close. So there, if you move it in anymore, it's going to be it told, it's going to reflect along the surface, so none of it really gets out. And if you go above that, then all you have is the reflected ray. That's called total internal reflection. That's the reason you can see the reflection of the turtle on the surface. So there's an angle at which that occurs. And that's, you know, in physics, that's what they'll want us to calculate. It's, it's, you can use a new formula or you can just apply Snell's law, remembering that your second your refracted ray is 90 degrees. The angle at which that occurs is called the critical angle. And again, you, the critical angle is the ratio of the two indices of refraction. That's just Snell's law applied to refracted ray being 90 degrees. We have a lot of applications of total internal reflection nowadays. And so much of, you know, you're, you're watching this on an internet connection that probably that signal at some point has gone over some fiber optics, which is much faster than um, the old type of way of transmitting. And that's because it uses light, and it uses fiber optic cables are basically clear um, strands of plastic, 
you can shine the laser in on one end and the index refraction and the size is picked so that it totally internal reflects. It just bounces down the cable. Uh, and, and you've seen this probably in all sorts of different novelties, you know, for Christmas and Easter and Halloween. People have uh, witches and whatnot that you've got little cable, little plastic fibers that go down into and you've got a, a light inside that changes colors and it conducts that light out. That's total internal reflection. Like I said, it has lots of applications. You're using it as we speak. There will be some homework problems on that. So that's the last slide I had. That's the last video uh, in this first section. I'll post some examples where I worked some of the problems later.